We are going to take a look at the error handling activity. This is on pages 17 to 21 in your activity guide, so you will want to have that handy. This activity does not require any building. Rather, we will be simply observing a number of errors and how they impact the flow of documents through our process. So I encourage you right now to pause the video and work through pages 17 to 21. And when you're ready, uh, jump back over to this video and we'll be able to walk through it together. So I'm going to jump into the platform here. We're looking at page 17 in our activity guide and we are going to get a little organized again first. So from out of the one arc overview i want to create a new folder in here and name this one error handling activity one and click save and there's our new folder now we want to browse the process library and simply search for arc one and find error handling activity one and then click install and we will choose the folder that we just created, Error Handling Activity 1, and click Install. And we want to view the process. So let's review the process uh, briefly. This process is set up to generate errors so that you can observe how they look in the test window and also what kind of impact they have on the process itself. So the database is going to read four records into uh, our process. And then we have a map here. And if we click on that, we'll see that there's a simple lookup on this map where it's taking the contact ID as a key and then outputting it as a category value. And if we click on the edit button, we see that there are some uh, unique keys. And each of those keys are assigned a value. And this will go pretty much in order one, nine, two, three. So you'll just note that the nine seems out of the place there, right? So we got one, nine, two, three are the values that are coming in for category. Now we get to the route shape and the route shape will route the documents according to what the category value is. So you will notice we have one, two, and three and the value of nine is the odd man out. So anything with a Category value equal to one will flow to the exception. Category value of two will flow into the lookup class, although there is an error in the map. Three will flow into the Salesforce, and you'll notice here Salesforce connector bad. We have an invalid log in there. And then default would flow to nine. So let's save this and give it a test. And starting on page 18, you'll see a brief description of each error, and we want to be able to take a look at each of these errors in turn. So this is the first message that pops up. This is a process level error. There is an invalid login, and we'll take a look at that in just a moment. So when we click on document one, we see that the route has forced that into the exception shape, which creates an error condition for us. When you click on document two, you see that the processing stops at the route shape and you don't see anything further and we'll touch on that in just a moment. When you click on document three, you'll see that there is an error in the map. Finally, when you click on document four, you'll see that there is an error in the Salesforce connection. So here's just a few ideas to consider. Three errors were thrown by the process. One was a process error and two were document errors. Which was which and how do you know? Well, the login was the process error. You could tell it was the process error because it had the initial pop-up error message. So the document level errors happen in the process itself and the other documents continued to process. Once you hit a process level error though, all activity for the process stops. The second question there was, what was the source of each of the errors? Well, the first one was a planned exception that we created 
ourselves. The second was a mapping error. There's a non-numeric value that was mapped there. And third was the bad connector login. So how did each of these errors impact the processing of the document is question number three. Well, the document errors stopped the processing of that specific document, but the process error stopped the processing of all documents. And that answers the riddle of why document two stopped at the route step. So if you recall, that had a value of nine, and so that would fall down to the default branch. Recall also that Boomi processes branches sequentially. So branch nine was waiting because that was the default branch until branches one, two, and three were completed. But because branch three had an error, the entire process stopped. So document number two was held up at the route shape and never got to go down the default branch.